Carl Rove was at the University of Connecticut earlier this week, and a brave veteran stood up and asked him if he'd apologize for the Iraq war. Here's how it went. For a war that was an act of aggression with no clear goal, can you take responsibility and apologize for your decision in sending a generation to lose their humanity and deal with the horrors of war which you have never had the courage to face? Will you apologize to the millions of fathers and mothers who lost their children on both sides of this useless war? He had thumbed his nose at the international community, had passed at the United Nations 14 resolutions calling upon him to live up to the terms of the surrender agreement at the end of the World War Four. Now that's accurate. 14 times he gave the finger to the United Nations. He refused to live up to his agreements. And he was a state sponsor of terrorism, and in the aftermath of 9-11, he represented him. He was then burning tens of millions of dollars from the Oil for Food program to keep together the network of scientists and engineers and dual use facilities to reconstitute his weapons programs. He admitted as much to his FBI interrogators. He said, The West is losing interest. The West is losing interest, and I'm able to get, I was able to keep together these, and they would lose their interest, and the sanctions regime would fall out of place, and I would be able to reconstitute my WMP programs, and maybe I wouldn't be around, but Ude or Kuse, the sadistic bastards who were his son, would be able to govern in his behalf. It was the right thing to do. I appreciate your service for our country. I'm sorry for what you went through, but it was the right thing to remove Saddam Hussein from power. The United States government and the United States military was right to do so. We should be proud of what we were able to achieve in Iraq, and we should be sorry that we left them alone. Because when we left them, things deteriorated. The same as they would have deteriorated if in 1955, Dwight Eisenhower had said, you know what, we've had this horrible civil war in Korea, let's wash our hands of it and go home. The world would look a lot different had we done so. If in 1950 we'd said, you know, we've been in Europe for five years, we defeated the Nazis, but you know what, let's go home. We should have stayed there and remained there like the Iraqis wanted us to. We would not have seen the rise of ISIS. We would not have seen the displacement of millions of people in the country. And we would not have seen the death of tens of thousands of people simply because they believed in Jesus Christ or were Shia, the Sunnis, or were, Sh or were Shia. So I'm sorry, we have a fundamental disagreement on it. I'm, 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 I appreciate your service, but I'm not going to apologize for our government having done the right thing by removing Saddam Hussein. The rest of the world is wrong and we're right. The rest of the world is wrong and we're right. We should have gone into Iraq even though it was an absolute disaster. And did you hear his argument? He, he said, quote, when we left, things de deteriorated. When we went in there, things deteriorated. Say what you want about Saddam Hussein, he stabilized the region. He said, well, if we stayed there, ISIS wouldn't have came about. No, if we never went in, ISIS would have never came about. Once you go in there, you open Pandora's box, and it's going to be a shit show no matter when we leave. Whether we leave in five years, ten years, or a hundred years, no matter what happens, you just riled up the sectarian te tensions, and then you leave, and then of course it's going to go to shit. So once you go in there, what, then you just want to stay in there forever? But why would you, you know, lose American lives over a conflict that has nothing to do with us? So if you're so concerned about ISIS, oh, they're murdering Christians over there, the rise of ISIS is horrible, which is why we should have stayed. No, it's why we should have never went in in the first place. The original sin was your decision. The original sin was the administration that you're defending right now, your own administration. Well, the Bush administration and Cheney, but you, of course, were cheerleading all along. Yay, more war! And then notice, he also mentioned at the beginning there, it went from... Uh, Saddam has WMDs, right? That for, No, actually, first, scratch that. He didn't even mention 9-11 there. But the original argument, when they first said we must go into Iraq, was Saddam was responsible for 9-11. Saddam was responsible for 9-11. Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden, they're like this, man. They play Parcheesi on Saturdays. We need to invade right now. We gotta do it. We gotta do it. Saddam is responsible for 9-11. Now, that was 100% without question Concrete lie is what that is. That's what that is. It's a lie. We know it's a lie. The international community knows it. Knows it's a lie. Every serious journalist and reporter today discusses it within the context of it being a lie, or at the very least, it's just wrong, right? You could 
put motivations on them however you deem appropriate. I'm not going to get into that right now, but it's not true. It is not true that Saddam Hussein was responsible for 9-11. He's a Ba'athist. The Ba'athists are uh, relatively secular Sunnis, and of course, Osama bin Laden was in Al-Qaeda. They're Sunni fundamentalists, uber-religious. That's not what the Ba'athists are. So they were mortal enemies. Saddam hated anybody that threatened his power. Osama bin Laden threatened his power. So that wasn't true, but then they moved the goalpost. Did you notice? First it was he's responsible for 9-11. Then when we figured out that wasn't true, they moved the goalpost to, well, he has weapons of mass destruction. Now, did they establish that he's going to use them on us if he has them? No. Never did at all. Would he have? No, he wouldn't have. He knows that he would get blown to smithereens if he did use them anyway. So the argument was he has WMDs. The implication was he's going to use them. Well, we know that he wouldn't use them for the reason I stated, but also, he didn't fucking have them! Remember Colin Powell holding up, like, an anthrax vial, like, oh, he has uh, anthrax weapons and nuclear weapons? No, he didn't. He didn't have any of that. It's been proven. The worst he had was the old chemical weapons that we gave him, which we wanted him to use against others when he was our fucking ally! So, he didn't have a nuclear weapon, he didn't have, uh, an anthrax weapon that was made up. And again, he wouldn't have even used them on us if he did have those things. That's another thing you just made up. But then notice, they moved the goalpost a third time. To what? He's just a bad guy. Oh, is he? Well, there are a lot of fucking bad guys around the world. Should we go invade them all and topple all those governments? That's not an argument. No, the standard by which you evaluate whether or not we go to war is... Does this represent a direct threat to the United States of America? Is there an imminent threat of danger if we don't go to war? Is this a matter of self-defense and self-preservation or not? It didn't meet those bars. It didn't meet those bars by a long shot. And also, those, uh, the Halliburton dollars that Dick Cheney has sitting in his pocket uh, also were maybe a little incentive to push in certain directions. I mean, this guy got uh, millions of dollars as a bonus when he left Halliburton, and then lo and behold, when the Iraq war happens and we start doing war all over the place, he gives them a no-bid contract. What a surprise. All these guys have ties to the defense industry. They, they view the United States of America as we're supposed to be the imperialist power. We're supposed to push our will on everybody. And if you don't agree with that, you're wrong. So what ends up happening when that's your theory? Because you're so sure that you're right, you end up acting so wrong. Like he mentioned there, oh, there, we wouldn't see 10,000 Christians dying. If we, if, as long as we stayed, it would have been better. We're responsible for, responsible for the death of 200,000 civilians. So again... It, if you want to see who the bad guy is, look in the fucking mirror. You did the original sin which led to these problems. So, for him to not apologize, if he was just being a human being, right? I mean, what would he say if he was just being a decent human being here? Well, you know, I disagree with you, but I feel very bad that we had to do what we had to do, and I sent you there, and... If I could take it all back and not go in in the first place, would I have done it? Probably. Because now we see what's happened as a result of it, and that's not okay. And some of our intelligence at the time was off. But there's nothing we could do now. All I could do is give you my sincerest apologies. But he didn't do that. He didn't do that. And even that would have been a little defensive, right? But he didn't do that. He did the exact opposite. Thank you for your service, but you're wrong, and I'd still go in there today if it was the situation. And Saddam Hussein 14 times snubbed the UN. Yeah. You know who else snubs the UN? All the fucking time? You know who else snubbed the UN on that issue of the Iraq War? We did. We didn't have international approval, and we went in there anyway. So don't talk about international law unless you're going to use those same standards against yourself. But you're not going to do that, because you're a neoconservative. And that's what you do. You apply different standards to other people than you do to yourself. And that's why everybody hates you.